afternoon, everybody. I'm Bob Yospiel from Oasis Pro. Pinch hitting today for our CEO, Pat Lavecchia, who unfortunately had an unavoidable conflict come up this morning. So he asked me to step in to deliver this keynote um, speaking engagement. Uh, it's a pleasure to meet you all. Um, I'll give you a little bit about my background. Um, I spent uh, most of my career in the, in the traditional uh, financial markets. I was at Credit Suisse for 20 years. I left there in 2011 after spending time in investment banking, in capital markets, and ultimately under the CFO. From there, I moved on to the Bank of America and the Royal Bank of Canada, where I helped manage fixed income trading technology. I crossed over into the digital space in January of 2021 as employee number three at Oasis Pro Markets. I'm proud to say that we're over 20 people now in the U.S. with 22 offshore developers. Our firm is growing, as is the ecosystem. Oasis Pro Markets is a, or Oasis Pro is our holding company, is a global fintech infrastructure provider. Um, we also operate a uh, full service SEC FINRA registered broker dealer. And the focus of that business is on our digital securities alternative trading system. We have a primary marketplace and a secondary trading platform that has the regulatory approvals from the SEC and FINRA to trade digital security tokens against digital cash. Digital cash being stable coins, so something like USDC or DAI. Um, we've also built out our tech stack to become a one-stop shop. We have a tokenization platform where we can actually write the smart contracts. We have a digital uh, transfer agent that's approved by the SEC. And we have an API management dashboard that allows us to plug seamlessly into the legacy infrastructure of large financial institutions. What attracted me to cross over from kind of the TradFi world to the digital space? I think it's several things and the recognition of how blockchain and smart contract technology can be leveraged by the traditional capital markets. If I look back to the financial crisis of 2008, many large firms didn't understand where their counterparty risk truly lied. You may have exposure to Lehman Brothers, not realizing that the Lehman Brothers lease in Canary Wharf in London was guaranteed by AIG. That type of domino effect, I think, can be eliminated um, by perfecting the documentation of counterparty documents, swap agreements, repo agreements, et cetera, into smart contracts. When I was at Credit Suisse and at the Bank of America, one of the key abbreviations that was often thrown about was called STP or straight through processing. The nirvana was that the operations product control compliance or the whole back office for that matter would have fewer people touching each individual trade. What we found, and this is verified through a PwC study is that there would be an 80% productivity gain using digital security tokens versus traditional securities in the areas of operations, part of control, compliance, et cetera. So we are moving into a, uh, a new phase in the capital markets and the financial markets. And I can address some of those issues now. I'd like for this to be an interactive conversation. So for those of you who have questions throughout my presentation, please uh, put them into the chat. Jason can filter them and he can feel free to interject at any time. So I don't know, many, many of you may have seen uh, Citibank put out a long report uh, a couple of months ago. And by their estimation, they're looking at tokenization of real world assets to reach $10 trillion by 2030. So in seven years, they're thinking about seeing this market grow to $10 trillion. It's truly, truly amazing. Some of you may have seen the recent news this morning from JP Morgan where they announced a tokenized money market fund as collateral. This added uh, this additional utility to a traditional product that gives it uh, you know, a, 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 an asset class that is typically underutilized as, as a collateral form uh, is truly amazing and could be a game changer. Margin calls are gonna be completed in seconds rather than overnight. 
So this technology uh, is trickling into one of the most important um, interactions between major financial institutions, which is the repo market. Citi, JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs have all announced various initiatives, various initiatives in the digital space. Citi came out with a tokenization service announcement last week. JP Morgan obviously has the Onyx blockchain that they're building internally. Goldman Sachs is using the DAML platform for their tokenized um, efforts. So what does this mean for real world assets? TradFi firms are way ahead of where the market believes they are right now. Many of them have been working in, the, in this blockchain space for five, five to eight years. One of the biggest use cases that we're seeing is the tokenization of the portfolio of portfolios of private equity companies, or even potentially tokenizing new funds. So think of a KKR private equity fund that's a healthcare fund. Perhaps it's a $250 million fund. The minimum ticket size that for an investor would probably be in the neighborhood of $250,000. That puts most Americans and average investors um, outside of, of that circle of these attractive alternative investments. Tokenizing that, that fund or that ticket into a fraction of 5 or 10% makes it much more um, affordable for your Main Street investor. So you're going to begin to hear the term democratization of the private equity markets or the private markets uh, used more and more. And I think that's extremely important. I think giving normal investors the access to uh, the returns that have traditionally been generated by these private securities is extremely important. And it offer also opens up a new, for, new pool of capital to these large asset managers and private equity funds. We are seeing a, a number of use cases for yield-based uh, securities. Uh, if you think of a mortgage-backed security or an asset-backed security that's tokenized with a smart contract, it will all but eliminate the need for a third-party asset servicer because the principal and interest payments will all be made online. Simply the CFO in an office can hit a button on his PC and make the principal and interest uh, distributions himself. Everything will settle on chain via the smart contracts. We talked about a little bit about counterparty risk earlier today um, when I talked about the financial crisis. It's even recently, uh, within the last 12 months, I think you all saw the GameStop Robinhood fiasco where a number of trades failed, large number of trades failed because the counterparties didn't have the ability to settle the trade or they didn't have the cash or they didn't have the securities. With digital security tokens and using an exchange such as Oasis Pro Markets, both parties have a pre-verified digital ability to settle a transaction. In other words, I know that you've got the security. You know that I've got the digital security, the digital currency. Therefore, we make a match in atomic swap. And in seconds, uh, the trade is settled and nothing fails. That's one of the biggest benefits I see in the space of digital security tokens using digital currency. Jason, I don't know if any questions have come up, but I'm happy to answer any at this point, unless Jason, you have some, some topics you'd like to raise with me. Yeah, um, no, no uh, questions yet from the audience, but if you can talk a little bit more on OPM's business model, where you guys are headed, uh, what you see the future of capital markets looking like and your involvement in that. Sure. So we have an institutional focus, really. Um, we are working with some of the largest and well-known financial institutions in the world who have expressed interest in participating in these markets using uh, our technology, which is state-of-the-art, best-in-class. Um, we've gotten comments from uh, the number two uh, person at one of the largest asset managers in the world telling us that our tech stack is really cool. When you hear that from somebody, especially somebody with gray hair like myself, it really resonates. And I think, you know, to that point, I was at a, a Connecticut crypto forum breakfast last Friday. It's held every Friday, once, it's held uh, every month on Fridays. This wasn't your typical digital asset or crypto crowd of 
20 somethings wandering around in hoodies. It was many people like myself, gray hair, blazers, maybe a vest, but certainly a collar. We're interested in this, how this technology is going to transform the financial markets. Even the founder of Knight Capital was in the audience. Of those of you who know Knight Capital, one of the biggest uh, um, market makers uh, in the world was there listening intently to how this technology is transforming the capital markets. One of the regions that's really exceeding uh, the rest of the world is Asia. Asia seems to be well ahead of Europe and the Americas with respect to digital asset adoption. Much of it is running through Singapore. The Monetary Authority of Singapore, as many, even, uh, many of you know, is running uh, Project Guardian, which is a pilot that will uh, test um, the guardrails and the infrastructure around the issuance of various digital securities and, and different asset classes. It is making its way to Korea. It is making its way to Taiwan. Uh, and I'm sure it will begin to spread uh, west. Um, I think one of the big, you know, we spoke to um, the Singapore Stock Exchange or the Bond Exchange a couple of years ago. They were really well ahead of where the rest of the world was. And I'm not surprised that this pilot is being run in a regulatory compliant uh, manner with proper oversight. I'll pause there and just see if anybody has come on with any questions. Can you talk a bit more about, um, you know, who you're working with, uh, some partnerships, anything going on there? Um, you know, what's your collaboration look like with the, end, sure. uh, the industry? Sure. So we have uh, a number of partners. Some of them I can't disclose. Many of them are large financial institutions, but others I'm happy to chat, chat about. Um, we have a great partnership with Invinium. Invinium is a platform to this price discovery and data validation on private security assets, including real estate. They have been fantastic, fantastic with, with us. Uh, we refer business to each other. They've got an incredibly talented team. And I can't be more proud to be partners with people like Pat O'Meara, Frank Walchuk, Todd Stevens, among others, over at Invinium. Redwood Trust is one of the biggest issues of mortgage-backed securities in the country. They invested in our Series A round. They recognize the benefits of digital security tokens in the issuance of mortgage-backed securities. Again, as I alluded to earlier, the elimination of third-party asset servicing is a huge cost savings that can be passed on to investors in the term in the form of additional yield. Murray Asset Management, uh, which is like a black rock of Korea, is one of our investors. We are talking to them about uh, potentially using our technology stack in some initiatives that are being run at, out of Seoul, Seoul, Korea right now. Avalanche, the blockchain protocol, uh, the Blizzard Venture Fund, which is part of Avalanche, is one of our major investors. Again, we work with them to source issuers uh, for uh, our platform that will go on to, to Avalanche. That's an overview of where we are basically with a number of our partners that have been publicly announced. A number of other uh, announcements will be out in the next uh, four to six weeks that we're very excited about. Um, it will be uh, names that everybody here is familiar with, projects that everybody here is familiar with. Um, and it's a testimony to the great momentum that we have not only, not only here at Oasis Pro, but within the digital asset markets as well. Fantastic. We have a question from uh, Jonathan. Uh, what does Oasis see as time horizon for security tokens pre-regulation or post-regulation or some projected timelines? You know, what are the leading platforms looking for in issuances for new or potential asset managers raising capital? A, a great question. Um, you know, I think the regulatory environment uh, remains unsettled. Um, I think um, the adoption of CBDC, central bank digital currencies, is coming. Um, I do know that the reason we 
put a digital transfer agent into our tech stack. And as part of one of our offerings is that the SEC is not going to recognize the blockchain as the authoritative ledger, even though we all know it's an immutable record. There is a hesitancy right now to use the blockchain as the authoritative ledger. Therefore, transfer agents are still going to be required. Therefore, we put together a digital transfer agent. The regulatory environment will continue to evolve. I think one of the most important things is that we need to um, separate digital asset technology, blockchain technology, from cryptocurrency and from FTX. The FTX debacle and the crypto winner set a number of platforms back only because there was a lack of knowledge or maybe education. Um, blockchain is not crypto. Blockchain is not FTX. FTX is a fraud that's happened time and time again in the financial markets. Um, MF Global, which was the John Corzine fund, was the most recent example of co-mingling of customer funds and, and, and um, uh, the firm's losses. Um, we've seen it over and over again. Um, it's just a lack of control, a lack of a lack of real um, oversight that led to that. I think it's important for everybody to recognize the benefits of the digital security tokens with real custodians, with a compliance framework. Uh, we'll provide the, the guide rails necessary to eliminate those kind of risks. With respect to asset service, asset managers raising uh, funds and raising capital. Again, as I said earlier, I think using digital security tokens will open up uh, a new pool of investors who can participate in some of these fundraises on a fractionalized basis rather than on a, you know writing those big checks, like I mentioned earlier, $250,000. Thank you, Bob. And we have another question from uh, Daphne. How are TradFi players working with U.S. regulators to shape what compliance looks like for compl uh, blockchain transactions and tokenization? Another great question. Um, we have a, a very robust compliance function, function here, a robust compliance team. Many of the big banks are definitely interested in how um, their compliance teams their compliance requirements match up against blockchain and digital assets. Obviously, um, I think they have, there's some concern about using uh, public blockchains. Therefore, private or permission blockchains are more attractive, which is why you might see, you see what uh, JP Morgan has done by building their own blockchain called Onyx. I think that gives some of their compliance folks uh, a level of comfort. I think one of the most important things, and I, I did not mention this earlier, but you know, digital security tokens in our platform um, still needs KYC AML, which we do. Um, we KYC AML everybody that comes to the platform, whether they're investors or issuers. We follow the same compliance framework that you would follow in the traditional markets. And I think that's what the big banks are focused on, is that what changes in their mindset from a traditional offering versus a digital offering. I think in many respects, it's the same. It's just the ability or the desire to understand uh, the technology. I think that is maybe raising some concern. Um, I often use uh, the phrase um, education, reg regulation, implementation when it comes to the digital asset ecosystem. Education is getting investors, traditional finance players, compliance people, regulators up to speed on what the benefits really are. Regulation is when the regulators get comfortable with this technology and allow it to move forward is when we'll get to implementation. So I like to use those words, I actually have them written on a whiteboard uh, in our office here, uh, education, reg regulation, implementation. That's, you know, that's why it's probably a 10 year time frame from the time we move from where we are now in this very nascent industry to where we have, as Citibank suggested, a $10 trillion market uh, by 2030 in uh, security tokens. Thank you, Bob. And we have another question from Josh. Uh, hey, Bob, how does DTCC and on chain security transactions work together? 
or compete against each other? Will DTCC go full blockchain or will the two settlement systems compete for the market share in the private securities space? Great question. Um, we're part of the DTCC um, private security uh, tokenized uh, project, tokenization project, uh, certainly for private markets. Um, we have lended our subject matter expertise, our technology folks, to provide them with the guidance and instructions on how their model should work. I think overall in general, DTCC and the equity markets, which I think are very efficient as they are, I think they're very focused right now on settlement times. I know they're driving very hard right now, right now towards T plus one. And from T plus one, they can probably go to T plus zero. Uh, and they can do that pretty quickly. They are definitely focused on this. Um, they understand the implications for it. Um, and they need to be part of it. And they recognize that. Fantastic. Uh, another question from Xander. Let's say Redwood uh, does a hybrid primary issuance on and off chain uh, off SEMT shelf, mm -hmm. and I want to participate. Who am I able to trade with? Great question. One of the attractions of using somebody like Redwood, which has an existing investor base on the buy side that recognizes the benefits and the efficiencies of using digital security tokens versus a traditional method. Um, we'd be more than happy to plug into our platform, use our state-of-the-art matching engine or our RFQ request for quote uh, technology uh, to provide liquidity or to get liquidity when it comes to their holdings. For a traditional investor, you may want to use the paper or the traditional security. The question is, how do you trade it? You need to call around to two or three different banks and you may need to get a, a attorneys involved. Uh, and do the transfer, which could take a couple of weeks. Here we have a platform that allows you to do it online instantaneously with and with all, all but reducing, uh, eliminating counterparty risk. We have another question here. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm just struggling with reading this one. Give me one second. Somebody's asking, is it safe to say that tokenized real estate is likely a significant, have a significantly longer tail versus tokenized bond and treasuries with shorter duration as the next bull cycle compels new market makers? Uh, another good question. I think it's difficult to say. Um, I think market making activity um, uh, needs to evolve along with uh, uh, platforms such as ourselves uh, to understand uh, the implications of digital securities, how to trade them, how to create liquidity, how the liquidity pools are traded, um, et cetera. So it's, it's, I would say, you know, tokenized real estate uh, offering is very much like a bond. Um, you're essentially tokenizing um, an LLP uh, or LLC, uh, you're not actually tokenizing a real piece of real estate. You're not tokenizing a mall or a, or a uh, commercial building. You're tokenizing the LLC that has a um, direct interest in the cash flows being thrown off by those properties. So it's very much like a bond. So I think it would be relatively similar to what you're saying with respect to tokenized bonds and uh, bonds and, and tre treasuries. Fantastic. Awesome. And, yeah. Uh, it's like, yeah. Yep. So, yeah. Been, yeah. Ashish looks like he's got a question. Do I have time to answer it? So, Ashish, Please. what's been your biggest challenge to get this platform up up till date? Where do you see your biggest, biggest challenges going forward? Another great question. You know, I think anytime you're scaling a business um, and you're growing it, the most important thing is to hire the right people. We've hired a tremendous technology team. We have a CTO, Viren Kandawal here, who was best in class, a true visionary, who surrounds himself with um, technology uh, experts uh, and has brought relationships with third-party vendors. 
that has helped us scale this platform and bring it to life. I think our, you know, our future is bright, really, as a result of the hard work of every one of our employees, the vision and leadership of our CEO, Pat Lebecchia, who's often viewed as a subject matter expert and is often sought out for his opinions, thoughts, et cetera, um, not only by um, venues such as this and various conferences, but by the regulators such as FINRA, who have reached out to us and to Pat on more than one occasion to participate on panels to discuss the evolution of the capital markets into digital asset markets. Fantastic. And then we, well, I believe I have another question here from Xander. Are you currently in talks with any brokers in structured product space regarding onboarding? I know some regional or mid-sized names may have interest and are rare or are worth exploring. Excuse me. We have had, uh, we've been approached by a number of um, issuers with various types of structured products. Um, we've had conversations with the boutique structured product shops, um, but our team is actually focused on institutions where we have uh, relationships at places like City and Jeffries, uh, Morgan Stanley, et cetera. Um, and we've been reaching out to them with respect to some of the structured product offerings that we have on our plate. I don't think we're quite ready or mature enough yet to have some of the smaller niche players involved, um, but we'll get there. Fantastic. Well, uh, Bob, leave us off with any uh, last comments, and then I'm going to go ahead and start backstage for our next panel or our next session. No, look, I, I just want to thank Jason, you and your team for providing this opportunity. Uh, it's a great webinar. Uh, we're very proud to participate in it. Um, if anybody has any additional questions, I can always be reached. Bob at oasispoolmarkets.com. Happy to chat. Uh, I'd like to thank you, Jason, and thank the participants of this webinar.